What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more logic bots. In the last episode, we completed the wall climbing challenge using suction cups, and that was really, really cool. I really enjoyed that, did some sequencing, and you guys gave me a lot of great suggestions. Uh, one, of course, being that, uh, like always, I completely overcomplicated anything. We had all this ridiculous logic down here in the circuit to go through the sequence, when in fact, a, a few of you pointed out that we actually could just have a pulse feed a timer which then goes all the way through and then loops back to the start and just keeps repeating a timer you don't need any of these condition checks in here and then these timers of course could just split out so we could actually remove all this this center stuff and it would have been a whole lot easier but anyways today i figured we're going to go and advance on again don't want to do the walking robots just yet so we're going to go into the warehouse and we're going to do some remote unloading which i'm assuming means we're going to build like a remote control forklift which is fantastic and then maybe we'll go into pallet placement i'm not sure yet Depends, I guess, if pallet placement is automatic or not. But let's start with the remote unloading, and we'll see what this challenge is all about. So the objectives are to build a remote controlled logic bot, which can unload the three crates from the conveyor and place one in each of the marked areas. Complete the level in a minute and 30 seconds. The robot cost, whatever. Uh, complete the level without using the screw lift. I don't exactly know what the screw lift is, but let's just view the level. So we start here, and we've got three marked areas there. Okay, that's easy enough, and the pallets are here. Oh, okay, I see. It's a full pallet. Oh, it's not just the little box. It's a full wooden pallet. So you actually have forks. Do we have forks? Is there such a thing as is there such a thing as forks? I mean, okay, so what do we got for body? We got the twin motor framework. Oh, we'll put some wheels on it. And then uh what do we have for Oh, forks. Okay, so we do have forks. Interesting. And then what's the screw lift? Screw lift. Oh, I see. The screw lift is like, I get it. That's why they don't want you to use the screw lift. Okay, so the screw lift is like the linear piston, I guess, except you can go up and down and you control how much up and down it goes, which is pretty much, you know, what they would expect you to do. Whereas the linear piston, you can only go all the way up or all the way down. You can't control the height. I think with the screw lift, I mean, let's see what the screw lift gives. Oh my goodness, that is ridiculous. So what does it even give you on the circuit board? I'm sure it gives you like an up or just an input. What? Oh, okay, yeah, so the height of the lift element of this part moves to the input value in millimeters, so it gives you from 0 to 800 millimeters. So you can say, I want you to be at 400, or I want you to be at 300, or whatever, and it'll go to that specific height. Whereas, you know what, let's just, we're just gonna do it with a piston. They said, can't use a screw lift, so we'll just put a piston down, and we'll just kind of check what the height is on that. You know what, we'll put a box section just like so. And then we'll put another box section just kind of like this. We'll rotate this 190 degrees. And then we'll just, you know, we'll figure out how wide our forks have to be next to each other. And, uh, I mean, hopefully that'll all work. So we'll put a couple of RC receivers. We're going to need at least two. One for movement and one for the actual lift part. And then we'll just put some forks on this and, you know, hope for the best. We might have to extend that bar out a little bit. And hopefully this thing is heavy enough. And then we'll just make a really simple circuit. So we've got the piston. We've got the two receivers. And uh, really simply, we'll have W, S, A, and D. And then on the other one, we'll just have the number one. One will just connect over to the piston, like so. And then W, um, yeah, we need some, we need some OR gates, don't we? Any one of the four of them turns on all the motors, right? So we do a triple four OR gate, and we put that up to a splitter. So if you hit any one of the four controls, both the motors will turn on, no matter what, right? And uh, that would come from all four of these. Okay, so we need a triple splitter for S. Uh, we need a single splitter for A and a single splitter for D. And W is just a pass-through. So W will activate both no matter what. S will go to this splitter because it'll activate both. But then it will also reverse both of them. So we're going to need some OR gates for the reversals. S will reverse both of them as well as activate them. That way you'll go backwards instead of forwards. And then uh, A would activate them both as well so we'll bring this up to the top like that and it will also reverse the left one so you turn to the left and then d will do the same thing activate them all but reverse the right one and then we should be good to go at least for the driving portion and then we've got the linear piston and we'll just see uh so w perfect a d perfect that's all great and uh one excellent so now the question is are we to how high up are we this is actually, this is perfect. Look at this. We're, we're already... Wait, are we not supposed to... Oh, we're not supposed to drop the stuff? Well, do... Is that a... Is that actually a thing? Or can I just, like... Like, what What if we... What if we... 
Does it count? The, the, I, I don't think it counts. All right, let's try this again. You know what? This is actually good, though. This is the right height. So really, we just need... Um, well, we need it to go up still. So we do still need this to go up. But then we need another one that can bring it down as well. Or maybe, like, I don't I don't think pushing it off is going to be the solution. I think we need, a, we need to have a second piston that can go all the way down to ground level. Can I... What if we... There's no way, there's no way this is gonna... You know, this is easy enough. Let's just put, um, let's just move this, first of all, because we're gonna, we're gonna keep this. So we, we need that to be at this height, right? We're gonna move this guy, and we'll just anchor it at the end instead, so we can go right up like this. And then we'll put another piece coming off like this, make this a little bit shorter. Right, just like that. And then we'll put another piston coming down. Uh, okay, right, perfect. So see, just like that, and then we'll just mount it to this. Now we have to bring this, this has to be bigger. Uh, of course we can't make this longer, can we? No. So let's just put another extension piece here. It's not exactly the most efficient, but you know what, it's fine. And we'll move this. Okay, perfect. You know what, this is gonna work. This is gonna be fine. I think this will be acceptable. And then this one, we'll just make this 50, put it right there. And now we should be able to take this whole fork mechanism and just mount it back to the... Oh, I don't want it. Hold on. No, not the... I want default anchor. There we go. Perfect. Just like that. Okay, and then all we really have to do is add this second piston to be uh, number two. And we'll run a line way over here for that. I mean, this is kind of janky. It's not exactly the cleanest. Oh, shoot. That still doesn't go... We're gonna need, we're gonna need two pistons on that. Do we need... You know what? Let's this this let's try it. Let's see if it even lines up first. We're probably gonna need a second piston. This is really not efficient. What if we you know we could just add a tilt? Okay, there we go. We can get it, no problem. So let's just Perfect. Now if we tilt down, what 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 does this give us? Does this do anything for us that's beneficial? Not really, does it? Can we get it to can we get it to maybe touch the ground? Ah, come on. No, this is not oh 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 <gasps> That, there's no way that's counting. But you know what? That's fine. We'll just push it. Look at This is efficiency. There we go. We've got it. All right. Let's loop back over here. Go get another one. I think this will count. Maybe. It's definitely not going to be in a minute 30 because we definitely need uh, something that's a little bit, a little bit quicker on the whole drop-off thing. I mean, maybe we put another piston that can push it off the forks as well as this one that can lower it. Um... Or, you know, we just have two that can lower it even further so it touches the ground. That would be really the easiest way to do it. Come on, there. There we go. We had it. No, it's... Is it going to count? If it counts upside down, you know what? Let's see if it counts upside down. But then I think we're definitely going to need to do another modification to this design here. Okay. You know what? That's fine. Just bring me... Bring me the pallet, please. No, a little bit further. It's just so it's just barely on the end. No, a little bit... There we go. No, no, no. Uh, there's no way that's going to count. That There's no way. There's, you know, okay, that's fine. You know what? We're just going to, we're going to go and fix the robot. We're going to add another piston and then that way it can go super low. So I think this is the perfect forklift. Um, it looks a little bit ridiculous. It would look a lot better with screw lift. I feel like we're going to fall forward, but you know what? That's okay. We do not fall over. And if we hit two, we almost make it to the ground. You know what? That should be good enough. That should at least let us, you know, try and take it off. Um... Let's see what happens here. Okay, so let's get this pallet. Are we still lined up? We should still be lined up. We're not. Oh my goodness. Okay. Are we too high or too low? Or did or was that just bad driving? It, you know what? It's probably just it was it was definitely just bad driving. There we go. Up. Oh, perfect. Going for the going for the speed run. Oh, what the heck? Did we just fall? We can't. Oh my god, we can't lift up the we can't. We're too heavy with the pallet. The crane plus the pallet is too much weight. Are you serious? Is that actually... Did we just... Perfect driving? Oh my... Oh, oh no. Oh no. It's just barely too much. We just... Reverse is not a good thing. Is basically... Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, there we go. We got it. Okay, perfect. And then... And then... Okay, and then... Re reverse. Oh, look at... Look at that. That was amazing. It was like delivering a pizza. Just super smooth super clean all right another one up no reverse slow oh my goodness 
This reverse is this reverse is so bad. So okay, okay. Can we just Okay, let's rotate. Good. Let's put it down all the way to the lowest. Alright, and then stop. Oh, look at that. That was great. It's fine. It's almost like perfectly balanced. Like it's just enough weight so that it it won't flip forward unless you, you know, go in reverse. Okay, and then actually we can just see there, that's the solution. Just rotate right away. We might actually get this in a minute 30. I didn't even think that was going to be possible, but hold on here. Come on. Drop it off. Yes! A minute 30. 1440 in cost, though. Definitely too much. I mean, this is where, if you want the cost achievement, you just do it with a screw lift. So, I think instead of doing the next level, because the next level is, is going to involve automation and actually setting up things a little bit more intelligently, I think what we'll do is we'll actually try and go for the cost achievement in this level, which I believe is 1100. Yes, 1100. And we'll do that using the screw lift. Once you've gotten this objective, we don't have to, you know, do all the objectives in one straight shot. So I think in this, what we'll do is we'll just try and do it with the screw lift and we'll just take a look at, you know, how we would actually do it with the screw lift because we have to feed it number inputs. So I'm, I'm just kind of curious as to how that would actually work. So let's just move our forks out of the way. We know our forks are at a good position. We'll delete this whole assembly. That's just ridiculous. And we'll just put a single screw lift down and try and adjust it. So here we go. So there's the screw lift. We'll grab our forks and we'll rotate them. I think negative 90 degrees to mount them to the forks correctly. No, that's upside down. So positive 90 degrees. There we go. And perfect. So those are mounted to the screw lift. So now all we have to do is figure out how to manipulate the numbers on the screw lift. And I think I wanted to do that with two buttons, like one being increase and two being decrease. So we'll delete this. We've got our screw lift here. And we're basically just going to feed it numbers one and two. So... We need like a, a stepper almost, like a counter. One will add and two will actually subtract and then we'll multiply it by 10 and then output that. So you're adding 10 millimeters at a time because it said it goes from zero to 800. So that would mean if you're adding 10 millimeters at a time, we'll be doing like, I don't know if I don't want to have to click it 800 times. So one times that would give us the screw lift height and see if we hit one, it'll go up. And if we hit two, it'll go down. We also have to lower the forks down more. The forks should be able to touch the ground. So let's just, uh, let's go back to the beginning here. Let's change a few things first. So there we go. So that should be really, really close to ground level. That way we can, uh, yeah, we can actually drop stuff off. And if we hit one, we'll go up. We can definitely increase that interval though. I think that interval is just a little bit slow. Actually, like ridiculously slow. Let's multiply it by 50. And then that way we'll hopefully have a little bit easier of a time. Oh boy, let's just send a start pulse to reset it every time to zero. Or just reset it once here. Actually, you know what? We don't even need to do that. Let's just let's just use number three as our reset button. So if we really need to, and it's in a weird position, we can just hit three and that'll bring it back to zero. Perfect. So how much is one? We hit one once and it's that much. You know what? That's actually pretty good. I can I can deal with that. All right. So let's kind of go for the time achievement. Oh, we don't need the time achievement. You know what? We're fine. Let's go. Perfect. I think we need it down. Up, up, up a little bit. Up a little bit more. Perfect. Okay, perfect. And then up again. And then up. And then... Yeah. And then now we can actually hit three. And it'll just reset itself to zero. Perfect. Look at that. And then we can just mash one a few times. Kind of rotate it over here. Oh, too much, too much. Oh, too little. I mean, this is, I guess, you really have to measure the heights if you wanted to do this, you know, a little bit easier with the screw lift. But definitely a lot less parts. It should cost us a lot less money than doing it the other way. Still going to get in the time achievement, though, I think. It's not really hard to do a minute and 30. I mean, that's 30 seconds of pallet. And we can just push that forward. Look at that. Perfect. And then uh, back up again. Rotate around. And... Finally, oh, no, 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 that's not the way to do it. There, no, back, no, no, no. Excellent. Awesome, perfect. Awesome. And pose for the thumbnail. Cha-ching. Oh, wait, no, hold on, hold on. Let's let's just get a really good thumbnail. Just so you guys know, a lot of people were saying, yo, Khan, thumbnails don't always happen live in the video. Well, this one, guys, look at this. This thumbnail happening live. Isn't that amazing? Now you're all going to really just appreciate how much work goes into these thumbnails. And of course, we didn't get the time achievement now, but that's okay. We already have the time achievement. I think we'll get the cost achievement. Budget, cheapest was 1440. Um, I don't know what the cost of this one was. The budget's 1100 though. And then perfect, should drop this off. 
and perfect. Wait, we didn't get the cost? Apparently, we didn't get it with 1100 because uh, gates actually do cost money. So the multiplication gate, I think $10. We've got uh, the counter gate, which I mean is whatever. You have to kind of have that $30. So in order for us to actually do this, we'd have to reduce stuff by basically $30. What is this? This is $30 and this is some other amount. $10. $40, so that would be 40 and then we need to reduce it by another 100 entirely on top of that. So definitely a little more difficult than I thought, but regardless, it still shows how you can, uh, you know, do this level with both the screw lift and, of course, without the screw lift and doing it with the janky pistons. Let me know, of course, what you think of this game in the comments down below, and uh, while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I absolutely love this game. We are in the final section here with the warehouse. There are a few levels that we've skipped before, so we're definitely going to go back and do those. I'm not going to try and do every level and get every achievement because, uh... I think that would take a lot longer. I always love hearing your guys' opinions on how I can actually do this stuff better and cheaper and, uh, you know, more efficiently. So make sure you hit up that section down below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.